Hey guys, I hope you're having another beautiful day and making the most of the gift that we have, which is the present. Now, for those who are first tuning in, I am Julian Service, our head mindset coach, and I'm always at your service, here to give you as much of my knowledge and experience from my journey in my athletics to help raise your performance to the next level. So today we have a great topic. We're gonna dive into the importance of routines for athletes and how we can develop these so that we ensure we're maximizing our potential and having effective scheduling and overall our preparation and getting us ready for training or for any type of competition coming our way. Okay, so absolutely great topic and is one of the most important things for us athletes because if you don't have a routine, you're going to get thrown out of whack. You're going to get a lot on your plate that you have to deal with consistently and you want to find a way to keep it balanced and still have fun. Right? Because once we get to a certain level, it almost becomes like a job when you get to those pro levels because this is now something you are receiving an income for. So for anyone who's not there yet, you are preparing hopefully to get there or at least maximize your potential in athletics to take it to the highest level you can. Right. So we want to share with you the importance of how you build those routines and why it is necessary for that preparation. So you'll never change your life until you change something you do daily, right? The secret of our success is found in our daily routine. And that is a quote from John C. Maxwell, he's a great author. Now, consistent routines lead to consistent performances. Of course, consistency builds everything. Level one of mindset is all about foundation and consistency because the routine is our foundation, okay? Routines are quite possibly the most important part of sports that athletes can create to improve their preparation and mindset. The major worth in routines is that they guarantee complete planning for that athlete's endeavors. Routines empower athletes to be totally strategically and intellectually prepared to play at their best. I don't know any athletes that I've known or elite athletes at the highest level we can go to in any sport who don't utilize routines in some piece of their competitive lifestyle. It is completely necessity. Routines are frequently utilized before competition to ensure that athletes are set up to play at their best. They can likewise be significant in two different areas. Routines can be created in preparing to guarantee that athletes benefit from their training time. Routines are likewise significant between performances of competition to assist athletes with preparing for resulting performances. There are a great deal of things in sports that athletes cannot control and we can't handle them, such as like the climate, the conditions, and even your competition. The only thing we can control is ourselves. Game schedules can change on command, especially if you're in a tournament, right? Playing surfaces that you're dealing with could adjust on the fly and you have to be able to make the most of what is given to you. But your preparation and your mindset and your routine will set you up to have your best performances regardless of the things we can't control. So athletes need to ask themselves, is my equipment in ideal con condition? Is my body genuinely warmed up and loose and ready to go? And is my mind primed and concentrated on that detail and focus? Routines additionally permit athletes to make their expectations more unsurprising by realizing they're deliberately covering each area that could arise and impact the execution of their performance. Athletes can likewise emerge with so much potential and dealing with those different contests that come our way. And on the one-off chance that athletes can decrease the things that turn out badly and be ready for those things is very important because the better you're ready and kept on track, the more you can stay relaxed and deal with those stressful situations in competition with more ease and more sense. So we need to understand as well, there's a typical term thrown out there about routines and rituals. 
So some sports psychologists use the term ritual in place of routine. But this term doesn't really relate to the exact same because with routines, they're trying to accomplish a certain type of connotation that goes against what rituals are actually doing. So everything done in a routine serves a specific and practical function in the readiness process. Okay. For example, a physical and technical warm up and a review of the tactics for an upcoming competition are all essential for total preparation. But in contrast, a ritual is associated with superstitions and is often made up of things that have no practical impact on performance. For instance, wearing lucky socks or following a specific routine to the competition site. So doing something on the way there, you know, you always uh, put on your clothes a certain way or you have to tie your shoes a certain way because it's lucky. It's a more of a ritual that makes you feel more confident. So routines can also be adjusted should the need arise. Again, for example, if you arrive late to the competition, you can shorten your routine and still get prepared. Rituals, though, are rigid and ceremonial, right? You're never going to skip out on that specific ritual. For me in baseball, I had to put my gloves, my helmet, my Evo uh, shield guard on, everything, my thumb guard, how I held my bat, all in a certain ritual to make me feel like it was getting me prepped for that muscle memory to kick in because I would always do the same ritual every time, but it seemed like a routine, but it was something I had to do. If it was something I skipped out, I felt like mentally I wasn't as lucky going into the at bat or into the, into the field, right? So there's always little quirks we have that are more rituals than necessarily a routine. So athletes can believe that rituals must be done or they will not perform well. And you control routines, but rituals control you. So that is actually right from a PhD in psychology, Jim Taylor. Great explanation of the differences between rituals and routines. So now getting into a training routine. Developing sport routines should begin in practice. Very crucial. For you to get the most out of your training, you should develop a brief training routine that will ensure you are totally prepared for every drill. The first step in your training routine is going to get your body ready and primed. This involves checking and adjusting your intensity as needed. This might mean taking deep breaths to calm yourself down or using intense breaths to raise your intensity. I recommend that before every drill, you get your body going in preparation for the start of the drill. So already starting to get your breathing pattern, your mindset, everything focused into that drill. Second, you need to focus on what you want to work on in the drill. So some type of purpose to it. If you have an internal focus style, you should already be narrowly focused on a particular cue, right? There might be a certain feeling that you're trying to search for or get to that knows you're, you're approving of what you're putting into the work. If you have an external focus uh, style, this would mean that the time to narrow your focus is on to the cue. To narrow your focus, you can remind yourself of the purpose of the drill. Then you can repeat that keyword to keep cueing yourself into the right mindset for the drill. Your training routine needs only to last a few seconds, but will completely prepare you to get the most out of your training. If we always lay that foundation for using sport routines before and during competitions, remember your training is going to affect how you play. That routine becomes effective and you have to learn to use those little routine and cues before every drill that you get into. So it doesn't matter if it's a simple drill, it's a a very difficult drill, you have those cues that get your mindset locked into what you're doing. So your purpose of why you're doing it becomes internal. You don't need an external reason to get that done. And that again, keeps you in a, in a routine that you're maximizing your training. Because if you're not making the most of your practice, well, then you're obviously going to hinder yourself in your performances. So you want to find the things that get you to make the most of what you're actually doing in the drills. If you're not even focused on what you're paying attention to, and you're just going through the motions, you can create some bad habits and you can actually put yourself in a regression. So it is important to have those simple cues, just like I would use with any of my clients of, you know, neutral spine position or keeping your head in a certain direction. You want to have those cues so it becomes routine that they will just muscle memory wise get into that action and they won't even have to think about it. It'll be second nature. So now when you get into pre-competitive routines, 
The next step is developing effective sport routines to create a pre-competitive routine that is an extended version of the training routine. So now it's a little bit more in depth than what you did in practice. The goal is the same, to be totally prepared to perform your best. The difference is that pre-competitive routines will dictate how you perform in your upcoming competition, and it can take up to a several hours to actually complete that routine. It's a little bit more uh, adverse and more goes into it because you're really preparing for performance and not just your training. That doesn't shortcome the importance of training, but of course you want to get a little bit more into that mindset as you're getting to competition. So there's no one ideal way or routine for everyone. Pre-competitive routines are individual, so you have to figure out what works best for you. For every great athlete, you'll see a different routine. And we all have common elements, but you have to decide what exactly to put into your routine and how to structure it. Developing an effective pre-competitive routine is a progressive process that will take time before you have that one perfect routine that really works for you. And you know the focus and intensity are the two areas that you actually really got to consider in developing as a part of your pre-competitive routine. And you should know whether you have an internal or an external focus style. So you have something within that you need to bring out within you that gets you going, or you have an external focus that brings you into that mindset. So you got to know what type of person you are. With that in mind, you want to plan out that routine so that when you do begin a competition, you have prime focus and intensity. So for me, on my pre-competitive routines, I was very focused on keeping myself very calm, remembering you know, the little things. I'd probably go to the batting cages and get some easy swings way before we have to actually join as a team. See if there's anything that feels off, if there's anything in my body that feels like it needs more attention to, so that I just get that out of my way so I don't feel like I'm trying to rush when I, once I actually am with the batting practice or pre-warm up with the team. And I'll have a certain meal I like to have. Um, I was always into uh, subs and lots of fruit, stuff like that. So some, some different carbs getting prepared. Uh, I'd listen to some music. And uh, I would really just take it very easy, do some stretching, a little bit of yoga and get the mind very relaxed because a lot of times we get very tense in competition and you want to find your ways to be as most relaxed as you can because the best athletes do their best when they are most relaxed and confident. So having a focus need, the goal in your pre-competition routine, if you have that internal focus style, is to put yourself in a place where there are few external distractions and where you can focus on that routine and preparation. To maintain that narrow focus, you want to go through that routine away from other people and activities that could distract you. So again, getting into that little bubble, starting to get your mindset prepared for the performance at hand. An external focus style means that you need to keep your focus wide during your preparation so you can keep your mind off the upcoming competition and away from thinking too much. So usually the external people are just overanalyzing, getting a little bit too much, so you need to even create that bubble even more. The goal in your pre-competitive routine, if you have that external focus style, is to put yourself in a place where you're unable to become focused internally and think about the competition. You want to get to that point where you're like, that's such a key moment to getting your mindset to where you need to be. Because if you can't make that wall that you need, internal or external style of focus, you're going to be lacking because you're focused on things that you can't control or you're getting too anxious already before it's ever even started, right? There's already enough anxiety that comes from competition. There's no need to add on more pressure to it. So really just focus on what you can control and from there, the rest will take care of itself. So for intensity, you'll need to build a routine around the need of that intensity. So depending on how much you're going to be putting out, Base the routine that maybe if it's a higher intensity, you need to do a little bit more to prep, you know, the neurological side, you want to prep the physical side, get everything to its max so that you're not going to injure yourself or be hindering of what you could be doing. And if it's a lower intensity, maybe you just need to go through a little bit less. You can give yourself a little more time before you start your routine because there's not as much needed from that competitive pre-competitive uh, routine, right? So. The intensity component of that routine should include checking the intensity periodically before approaching competition and using a psych up or psych down technique 
to adjust as needed. So if you're a little too hype, right, maybe you need to calm yourself. And maybe if you're too relaxed, you need to get a little bit more hype. So you got to figure out what feels best to get the most out of what you're putting into that routine. You'll need to also set aside time in your routine when to do these techniques. So knowing that if you tend to get psyched up a lot, you have a break in there, you have a block in there that sets you up to calm you down. Maybe some meditative music, uh, maybe a little light nap, just anything you need to get yourself to where you need to be. And as you approach the competition, you want to move closer to your prime intensity. So always building up. The short period just before competition should be devoted to that final check and adjustment of your intensity. So if you're not fully warmed up and you jump into it, you could potentially hurt yourself. You could potentially get results in the very first part of the competition that are a little bit like a uh, brain fart. What happened here? I'm not ready. So build yourself up. But if you're too hype and you come out with a little bit too much intensity for what you need, then you could overdo yourself and actually overwork the necessity that's going into the competition. So you got to keep that balance and find what works for you as an athlete. If you perform best at lower levels of intensity, you want your pre-competitive routine to be done at an easy pace and have plenty of opportunities to take a break and slow down and relax, right? You don't need to be too hype. Now, if you want to be around people who are relaxed and low key all as well, if you're always around anxious people, you'll be nervous too. So you got to think about who you're around, what you're listening to, what environment you're in. Those are going to come into as factors of are you able to stay at that lower level of intensity if that's what is your type of nature. If you perform best at higher levels of intensity, you want your pre-competitive routine to be done at a faster pace with more energy and put into the components of your routine. You will want to make sure that you're constantly doing something, right? You want to keep yourself active, keep yourself moving. That's just your style of your personality and your nature. So you need to feed off what is suited for you. There should be little time during which you are standing around and waiting. Okay. You'll also want to be around people who are energetic and outgoing. So again, that vibe, that tribe, that's all going to be energy that pushes you in the right direction for your routine. So now when we're designing this pre-competitive routine, the first step in designing it is to make a list of everything you need to do before a competition to be prepared. So really write down everything you need in order to be at your most prepped and prepared for the competition. Some of the common elements you need to do before a competition are potentially meals, you know, review of the competitive tactics, physical warm-up, technical warm-up, equipment check, mental preparation. There's a there's a bunch of things, right? And more personal things than that might go into the routine as well, including going to the bathroom, right? Or changing into a certain set of clothes beforehand and using mental imagery. Um, as I said, for me, you know, eating certain types of food, as I said, with meals, it gets you in that right mindset. It's something that it's a routine. Sometimes people like to eat the same thing before competitions. It's just what makes their body feel good. They feel like they got all the right nutrients and it just makes their confidence go up, which is at the end of the day, the routine is to one, get your body ready for competition and your mind, but as well, create that confidence level that, you know, you set yourself up for success. So then you need to decide in what order you want to do those components of your list as you approach the start of competition. In doing this, consider uh, the competition activities, right? So whatever needs to be taken into account. For instance, availability of a warm-up area or a place where you can eat uh, for your pre-competition -comp meal. And then this can all influence when you will accomplish different parts of that routine. So you want to make sure you know where you can be, where you can do everything so you can get your routine done. Next, you want to specifically know where each step of your routine can be completed. You should use your knowledge of competition sites of what you've performed at before, you know, and figuring this all out of where you can get your routine done most effectively. If you like to be alone when you're doing this, then maybe there's a quiet place for you to go. If you like to be around people, maybe there's a place where you can sit and enjoy the game before you or, or whatever you like to be doing. But establish a time frame and a schedule for completing your routine. That's very important, right? In other words, how much time do you need to actually totally get prepared? And some athletes like to get all that competition stuff done just in a short time before they begin. So some people like a lot of time. Some people just need a little short time. It, whatever gets you in the right psyche 
and your body prepped and your mind prepped to play at your best performance, that's your goal. That, that's what you need the routine for. And no one can tell you it's a wrong routine or right routine as long as you're getting everything off that checklist. So as I, you know, people want to arrive there hours before or not, that's all up to you. It's a personal decision. You will find out what works best for you the more you go through the process. So once your pre-competitive routine is organized, try it out at competitions because some things you might pull out, some things you feel like you needed to do more of. And it may work, it may not, but as long as you're fine tuning your routine until you find what's the most comfortable for you, that is gonna be what's best for preparing for competition. And lastly, remember, your routine before competition only has value if you use it consistently. Level one of anything with mindset is routine and consistency. So if you are skipping out on things that you need to routinely do, then how can you expect for it to become second nature or to be engraved as a behavioral habit, right? So it takes at least 30 days in a row of doing anything to make your body even want to feel like it's second nature. 60 days to actually engrave it, 90 days to start feeling like you want to do it. And it can take up to nine months to 12 months before you actually make it a maintenance. And it's almost like if you always have a cup of coffee every morning and you've been doing it for a couple of years, it will come to that feeling where your body actually is craving to do whatever aspect in your routine. So it takes time and you gotta keep consistently trying it and action will create motivation. So the more you actively do it, the more your body will realize, okay, this is actually good for me. I need to do this, right? So take that time and effort to make sure you are doing what you need to do to be prepared for all your performances. So simply, you just need to be making sure you are prepped and ready to perform at your best and achieve prime results in your sport. Because routines are the foundation of any successful athlete or any person nonetheless, right? It doesn't matter if you're a business person or you're a doctor or anything. No matter what you're doing, you are going to need a routine to handle everything that's coming in our direction. So having that consistency in actions and thought patterns will set us up for consistency in performance and in our daily life. When unexpected things, which are going to come, come our way, it is about having that routine to allow for smaller adjustments and smooth transitions from one task to the next. A key reason for a routine is not just efficient efficiency, but mental stability. That's very important. If we're unstable and our brain's always popping negative, positive, negative, positive, we're going to have issues with staying consistent. So one thing about a routine is it gets us prepped for if anything does come our way, that's kind of out of our control. We know how to handle ourselves smoothly and make the adaptations that are going to get us still moving forward. And the key reason for routine is not just having that sense of control, but we need to realize we have only 10% control. So when we control what we can control, which is that little small fraction, which is just ourself, then we start to see those things are only a part of how we make choices. So if we keep that focus on those aspects we can control and we don't get overwhelmed by the next task at hand, we will always do better in our ability to perform for whatever task we need to do right now. So maintaining that positive psyche and optimal fitness levels are all a part of staying balanced and efficient in your routine. So focus on what you can control, prepare for success, because failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So it is very important to have those routines, have those ways that you go through training, through before competition, on game day, everything, have those routines and maybe your little rituals that you do that keep you confident that are gonna make you succeed for your highest potential. If you are not putting in the effort into a routine and getting yourself set up on a way to be consistent, it's gonna be very hard because some days you are more tired than others. Some days life happens and there's things in your family life or your relationships or your career that give you a little bit of a down and you wanna make sure you have the things in place that keep your positive mental psyche in the direction it needs to be. So a routine is what helps you bounce back on the days when you don't have as much motivation 
when you might not have as much drive, when you feel a little bit more tired, when you feel like it's going to take a little bit more to compete today, having that routine is going to set you up for success. So in my life, I had a routine all the time. I woke up, I ate certain meals. I would make sure I'd get, you know, a little bit of some cardio in, get some yoga and stretching in, just making sure I'm listening to my body, seeing what it needs more of, what it needs less of. Do I need a nap today? Do I need to eat more food today? And you just keep adjusting as you're on the go and having the routines will give you the places where you know to implement those extra features. Okay. So I'm so thankful that all of you guys tuned in and were able to take some new information about the importance of a routine and how you can develop them for training, competition, and just life as a whole. We do have a great other blog that talks about the importance of other daily aspects of a routine on a daily living when it comes to, you know, ways of journaling, uh, our nutrition, how we keep our mindfulness. All those are a part of the bigger picture. But today was really focusing on those athletes and how to make sure your routines for competition and training are setting you up for success. So anyone who's first time here again, I appreciate you sticking around throughout the whole video and making sure you could gather some great information. So like, share, subscribe to Mindset and keep tuning in every week as we'll be giving you some more content every Thursday in hope that you guys can level up your performance and reach the highest level you can from your potential. So as always, stay strong, stay consistent, and stay healthy and keep developing yourself. Level up.